All right, in this episode of Crap I Got in the Mail. Okay, so for uh, the other day for um, Christmas, I uh, gave my nephew some of my CDs, several like compilations and best of albums, uh, just to kind of expose him to different types of music that he's probably not getting at home. And um, I, uh, I got this idea like four days before I saw him. And so um, I went online to order these albums. And then I was like, well, this is going to take way too long. So I'll just give him my albums and order these in lieu of that. And so I eventually finally received them in the mail. So I just want to do some unboxings and that kind of thing because we didn't have the ability to do unboxings in the 90s when this came out. I mean, we could do unboxings, but it's just nobody did it. So, yeah. So here we go. I guess the first one. Ah. We have none other than um, Starfire 59, the Easy Come, Easy Go box set. Um, this is 1994 to 2000 and brand new, still in the original wrapping. So let's tear this sucker open. <laughs> Why wait? Um, says here over two hours of unreleased rarities, live tracks and Starfire 59's best songs. Plus a 40 page full color booklet. Pay no more than 1999. I think I gave $4 for this. <clears throat> Gonna try to keep that sticker. Um, I might put it on the, uh, insert. Really stoked about this um, because I haven't opened. I got this album originally brand new in probably January or February of 2000. Uh, this came out in, I want to say, December of 99 about. Um, open up. There we go. So, yeah, here's the. Uh, so we open up. Oh, man. Oh, man. Spindle's fine. Yes. Good spindle. Good spindle. Another good spindle. Fantastic. We have two perfect spindles. Look at this. Crisp, clean booklet. So just kind of go through here. We have a uh, Starfire from April of 93. Um, and there's also a story by J. Edward Keyes, which he went on to play some material with Starfire. For those of you who are not familiar, I highly recommend going and checking out Starfire 59. Uh, fantastic band. It's basically just Jason Martin and a cast of other characters. But uh, look at that. Just look at that. Crisp, clean. Uh, this set is actually on YouTube. Starfire 59 at Cornerstone 95. Yeah. The Drop. The Drop is the only album that I lack from the entire Starfire 59 discography. So I have every release in every format, all the cassettes, all the records, all the CDs, um, the books, everything. I just lack that 7-inch. One of these days I'll get it. I'm sure it's on Discogs. There you go. Starfire 59. There's him and his wife, Julie. They uh, had an outfit called Bon Voyage. Also highly recommend it. Jeff Cloud in the studio with Gene Eugene. And is that, no, that's just a mixer. I was like, holy cow, is that a 909? No, it's just a mixer. <laughs> Jason Martin and Brandon Ebel on the floor. That's interesting. And that was the last photo up until the release of this compilation. Such a fantastic artist. Jason Martin is a god amongst men. But there you go. Brand spanking new. Look at that. Just just mint. Um, I might, if I can... Yeah. Yeah, there we go. I might go ahead and just put this... Um, should I put it on the cover? Yeah, I'll go ahead and put it on the cover. There we go. Nice. Okay, so one down. Now the next one we have, I'm really excited about this one. I know what this is. I'm really excited about this one. Is we have the 
fourth anniversary Tooth and Nail Records box set. Um, fun story. So this uh, was advertised to come out um, November of 97 to coincide with the fourth anniversary of Tooth and Nail Records. Uh, Bill Power lost the essay that he wrote um, for this at the last minute. So I quickly had to redo the um, entire story again. It pushed release back a few weeks. Um, I ordered it basically somewhere in November. Now this is back in the day before we had Amazon Prime and that kind of thing. So when you made an order, you had to wait forever and a day for the uh, order to come through. So um, I placed the order in at the end of November. Or maybe it was in December. I can't remember. I placed the order at some point. But uh, I didn't receive it until January of 98. Anyway, this is also brand new. Never opened. So I'm really stoked for this. This is the third copy of the Tooth and Nail box that I've had. My original copy that I got from 97, I gave to an ex-girlfriend because uh, she was just discovering Tooth and Nail records and that kind of thing. And this is probably in like 2002 or something like that. And then the second copy I bought in 2002 from... Uh, Mikey Huntington, the lead singer of Huntington's, um, I saw them in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and he was selling his CD collection to um, basically afford uh, lunch and that kind of thing on tour. And so I bought this box set and a bunch of other CDs from him uh, at that show. And so that was my second one. And then I gave that box set to my nephew. And so now we have, uh, this is the, the third version um, or the third yeah copy that I've had. So... Open this bad sucker up. I'm really worried that the cases on this will be busted. Kind of concerned. Hopefully not. Oh man, look at that. Brand new. Holy cow, a sticker. Yes, a sticker, guys. Look at that, a tooth and nail sticker. The original one I had on my car. I may just keep this one. So let's take a look at these cases. Disc 5. Spindle intact. No problem. No problem. Okay. Disc three and four. I can't tell if the spindle is broken or if it's just... Oh, there we go. The CD just came out. Okay. Oh, oh, three and four spindles intact and the door is intact. That's, that's a, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. And then disc one and two spindle intact. Spindles intact. The disc door is intact. All right. We got ourselves a mint copy guys. No flaws. So there are the discs. We'll put those there. There's a sticker. I'll put that there. And here is the booklet. So this right here is where uh, Tooth and Nail Records began in Brendan Ebel's uh, apartment. And the wife got me these uh, glasses and ice ball mold. And so I'm trying this whiskey I haven't tried before. Uh, Kentucky Tavern, I believe is the name of it. It tastes cheap. It was cheap. It was like $14. It burns the whole way down. Holy cow. One of these days, I'm going to put like $60 in on a bottle just to the taste of premium difference. But anyway, look at this. Look at these pictures. Phenomenal. There's Brandon Ebel. <laughs> it says, this was Bill's wacky idea. And thank God for you, Bill Power. Okay. Wish for Eden, the very first Tooth & Nail release. Very first Tooth & Nail band Here's a display of Wish for Eden Records at Camelot Music. It says Birmingham, Alabama, copyright July of 94. Um, as I said on the other video, there was some discussion on whether or not 93 was the actual release, and it turns out it was. I have a Tooth and Nail catalog, and in the catalog from 1996, it confirmed the 93 release, and I didn't even realize this until yesterday. 
Um, or not yesterday, but a few days ago. Tooth and Nail Festival number two, June 97. I went to Tooth and Nail Weekend, 96, 97, and 99. This uh, venue here in uh, Oklahoma, in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, called The Warehouse. Uh, every year, they did a annual Tooth and Nail Festival. And it's pretty exciting. Here's the uh, various iterations of the staff. Hmm. Just some random photos. I believe that's uh, Timmy getting a haircut during Don't Know. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many great photos in this booklet. All these great band photos. Some never before seen. Some alternate takes from photo shoots. And then we have the entire uh, Tooth & Nail library up to this point. The fourth anniversary box set was Tooth & Nail Release 100. And so this uh, book shows the first 99 releases. And then some vinyl records as well. VHS tapes, compilations, and some more never-before-seen photos. I mean... This release is just such good history. So I know I showed this off in the other video, but again, for those who um, don't know anything about Tooth & Nail Records, this is a great starting point. This, this compilation is just fantastic. Um, so I will go ahead and put the sticker in the middle there. And let's see, oops. Yeah. I was really excited to have mint condition CDs. Um, that, that's what that's what I'm really stoked about. The one I got from Mikey Huntington was actually in really good condition. Phenomenal condition. I, I bet he never even listened to it. Okay, and then that leads us to our uh, last opening. So our uh, last one is the Tooth & Nail 10th Anniversary box set. Um, so basically, like I said in the other video, this just picks up right where that, that one left off. This picks up a Tooth & Nail Release 101 and goes all the way out till uh, November 93. Or I'm sorry, November 2003. So this is uh, basically November 97-ish up until... Um, November 2003. But uh, also, brand spanking new. Never open. Um, I wanted to get new ones of all these so I could do like kind of a retro unboxing. Um, break the seals and that kind of thing. Because again, we didn't have YouTube back in the 90s or 2003. So it was kind of hard to do, you know, something like this. Uh-oh. I just got a piece of plastic. No. That means a spindle is broken. Okay, let's see which spindle is broken. So here's disc one and two. Oh, this one opens reverse. Crap. There it is. There's the offending party right there. None of those are on there. That is really a shame. Hmm. So now I have to find another uh, two disc set to harvest a case from. It's really disappointing. Okay, let's see if this one fared any better. No. Spindle's all busted on that too. So, disc three and four is beat to Hades and back. That's disappointing. Look at all this, all these plastic pieces from all the busted up spindles. What about this one? Is this one okay? 
scrap it. No. Good grief. Well, the one my nephew got is in practically mint condition because by that point, um, 2003, I converted all my albums over to MP3 albums. So I didn't have any reason to even listen to these. Um, so hope you enjoy it, kid, because mine are all beat to Hades and back. At any rate, um, let's open up this. Uh, as you notice, um, the layout for this one is much more like modern and polished. Whereas the layout on the other one is much more like teenage and cool or whatever. So and here's just uh, some pictures and some stuff. Everything is nicely formatted and that kind of thing. Band photos. More band photos. More band photos. <laughs> MXPX. Yeah, by this point, Tooth and Nail had gone corporate because um, EMI, at that point, now Capital, had bought a 50% operating stake. So, yeah, everything is much more corporate looking. The bands and, and all that's much more corporate. Um... I didn't like the way that they laid out the CDs on this because it's just a big list. Whereas the other one was an actual, you know, thing. Hmm. And you can see right here where the catalog number changes over. Cause of capital EMI screwed it all up. Oh well, what can you do? Yeah. So there's that. Those cases are all beat to Hades. Um, what do we got here? One. There we go. Well, Folks, I don't have much else to say. I just want to do some uh, quick unboxings. So we have um, the uh, Truth and Nail 4th Anniversary box set, 10th Anniversary box set, and Starflyer Easy Come, Easy Go box set. Uh, three fantastic box sets. I gave these to my nephew, my own personal collection. So now I'm replacing these with uh, brand new copies. So you saw me open them here. So that was pretty exciting to open up brand new copies. And drink some brand new whiskey that I haven't tried before with these little ice balls. The ice balls are actually really cool. Um, yeah, that's really cool. And the glass works out pretty well, too. <clears throat> okay, so I don't have much else to say, so thanks for watching and peace out.